All right, welcome and thank you for joining. Today we'll be sharing important information with you regarding New York's, New York State's paid family leave with a specific focus on caring for a family member with a serious health condition. Since its implementation in 2018, paid family leave benefits have been significantly enhanced to further improve the lives of working New Yorkers and their families, including providing more time off, more uses for paid family leave, and more financial security. In today's presentation, we'll start by discussing why we need paid family leave and then cover some basics you need to know, including the three original uses of paid family leave. Next, we'll go over updates for paid family leave for caring for a family member in 2023, including the addition of siblings as eligible family care members. We will then review the benefits, how much it costs, who is eligible, and the steps you need to take to request paid family leave for family care. We'll review some frequently asked questions about this type of leave, discuss new information regarding paid family leave and COVID-19, point you to some helpful resources, and then leave time at the end for questions. You can submit your questions at any time during this presentation using the chat function, but we are going to hold them all till the end. So let's get started. Why do we need paid family leave? For too long, employees have struggled to maintain their jobs when they need to care for a loved one during a specific time of need, whether that's welcoming a new baby, caring for a family member with a serious health condition, or dealing with family pressures when a loved one is deployed abroad on active military service. And more recently, many employees have been challenged by having to quarantine due to COVID-19 or to care for a minor dependent child who is subject to a mandatory quarantine or order of isolation. Employees in these situations face the stress of losing income when they need to take time off to help their family. In response to these needs, New York took action. In April 2016, New York Paid Family Leave, the nation's strongest and most comprehensive paid family leave policy, was signed into law. Paid family leave is employee-funded insurance that helps employees be there for their family when they're most needed. Because of paid family leave, Workers across New York no longer have to choose between caring for their loved ones and their jobs, as we now have employee paid insurance to help in these critical times. Paid family leave provides job protected paid time off so you can bond with a newly born, adopted, or foster child, care for a family member with a serious health condition, or assist loved ones when a spouse, domestic partner, child, or parent is called to active military service abroad. Under legislation signed into law in March 2020, paid family leave also provides paid time off and job protection so employees can care for themselves or their minor dependent child when under a mandatory order of quarantine or isolation due to COVID-19. We'll go into more detail on these uses later in the presentation as they are a bit different from the others. In addition to paid time off, New York's paid family leave also has strong employee protections. You are guaranteed to return to the same or a comparable job after taking paid family leave. A comparable job is defined as a position with comparable employment benefits, pay, and other terms and conditions of employment. You are guaranteed continuation of health insurance while out on paid family leave on the same terms as if you had continued to work. If you contribute to the cost of your health insurance, you must continue paying your portion of the premium while on leave. You are also guaranteed protection from discrimination and retaliation. Requesting or taking paid family leave cannot be held against you. Now, let's look at the basic uses of paid family leave to care for a family member with a serious health condition. Having access to paid leave to care for a loved one is important for several reasons. Studies have shown that it increases the quality of care in knowing a loved one is getting excellent care from their family member. It can provide pediatric, medical, and surgical experiences and better management of chronic diseases. Increases personal growth, meaning, and purpose for a caretaker. Hospitalized loved ones who are cared for by a family member may have shorter hospital stays, and with the well-established transition plan, may avoid costly hospital readmissions and emergency room use. While providing paid family leave did not eliminate the financial worries of taking time from work, with economic support, it can help to reduce stress by providing the option to spend more time with loved ones. With this type of paid family leave, you can take time off to care for a spouse, domestic partner, child or stepchild, sibling, parent or stepparent, parent-in-law, grandparent, or grandchild who has a serious health condition. 
the new in 2023, siblings are also included in the list of family members who are covered by paid family leave. You should check with your employer for details on when this goes into effect for your policy. A few other important notes for family care. Domestic partner is defined broadly under the paid family leave law. It includes people who are not related by blood in a manner that would bar marriage in New York State and who are dependent on one another for support. For example, an employee may be able to prove that they are in a domestic partnership by showing that they own property together or have children in common. A legal relationship is not necessary. It doesn't matter if these family members live outside of New York State or even outside of the country. Employees can take paid family leave to care for their family member as long as they are within close and continuing proximity. So in other words, present at the same location as the family member they're caring for during most of the paid family leave period. This might include necessary physical care, emotional support, visitation, assistance in treatment, transportation, arranging for a change in care, assistance with essential daily living matters, and personal attendance services. In order to take this type of leave, your family member must have a serious health condition. A serious health condition as defined as an illness, injury, or condition that requires either inpatient, hospital, inpatient care in a hospital, hospice, or residential health facility, or continuing treatment or supervision by a health care provider. A COVID-19 diagnosis may qualify as a serious health condition. Here are some examples of other conditions that may qualify as a serious health condition. Maybe you need one or full days to care for your mom when she undergoes chemotherapy, or your spouse or domestic partner had surgery and needs help recuperating at home, or your child is undergoing treatment for addiction and cannot attend school for a period of time. These are situations that may qualify for paid family leave and may be certified for the healthcare provider if they believe that the condition constitutes a serious health condition. The insurance carrier will make the final determination as to whether such conditions qualify for paid family leave. Since February 2019, paid family leave also explicitly includes support for organ donors. Former Governor Cuomo signed legislation to expand the paid family leave law's definition of serious health condition to explicitly include preparation for and recovery from surgery related to organ or tissue donation, ensuring those who donate can be cared for by their eligible family members under New York State paid family leave. Non-serious medical conditions such as the common cold or flu, routine dental work, or cosmetic treatments are generally not included. However, if medical complications arise and your family member then meets the guidelines for a serious health condition, the condition may be eligible. Now let's look at the specific benefits available to you under paid family leave. Eligible employees are, up, are able to take up to 12 weeks of paid family leave at 67% of their average weekly wage, capped at 67% of the New York State average weekly wage. An employee's average weekly wage is based on their last eight weeks of pay prior to taking paid family leave. For 2023, the New York State average weekly wage is $1,688.19. So this means that the maximum weekly benefit for 2023 is $1,131.08. This is $62.72 more than the maximum weekly benefit for 2022. It's also important to note that employees can take this paid time off all at once or intermittently, but it must always be in full day increments. To estimate your wage benefit, use the 2023 calculator on the Paid Family Leave website, and that's paidfamilyleave.ny.gov slash PFL Benefits Calculator 2023. Paid family leave is fully funded through employee contributions. The contribution rate is reviewed annually and is subject to change by the New York State Department of Financial Services. In 2023, the payroll contribution is 0.455% of an employee's gross wages each pay period. And then I, the maximum annual contribution is $399.43. That's $24.28 less than in 2022. Employees earning less than the current New York State average weekly wage of $1,688.19 will contribute less than the annual cap of $399.43, consistent with their actual wages. To estimate deductions, you can use the 2023 Payroll Deduction Calculator on the Paid Family Leave website, which is found at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov slash paid-family-leave-calculator2023. So, 
to summarize the benefit and contribution updates for 2023, the maximum weekly benefit is increasing from $1,068.36 to $1,131.08. Also, as of January 1st, 2023, employers may deduct at the rate of 0.455% of an employee's gross wages each pay period, but capped at the annual maximum of $399.43. Now that we've covered the types of leave, the benefits and costs, let's discuss who's covered and eligible for paid family leave. Most employees who work for private employers in New York State are covered under paid family leave. If you work for a public employer, your employer may opt into the program. If you're a public employee represented by a union, you may be covered for paid family leave if it has been negotiated as part of your contract through collective bargaining. For covered employees, Eligibility for taking paid family leave depends on meeting specific requirements for the amount of time employees have worked for their employer. Full-time employees, those who regularly work 20 or more hours per week, are eligible for paid family leave after 26 consecutive weeks of employment with the same employer. Part-time employees, those who regularly work less than 20 hours per week, are eligible after working 175 days, which do not need to be consecutive. Citizenship or immigration status is not a factor in employee eligibility. In 2021, Governor Hochul signed an amendment to the workers' compensation law, which expands coverage for domestic workers. Previously, domestic workers were only required to be covered if they worked at least 40 hours per week for their employer. Domestic workers who are hired directly by a private homeowner and who work 20 or more hours per week for the private homeowner are required to be covered for paid family leave. These workers are eligible once they have been in employment with that employer for 26 consecutive weeks. Paid family leave coverage is not optional for eligible employees. You can waive coverage if you regularly work 20 or more hours per week, but you won't be in employment for 26 consecutive weeks, or if you regularly work less than 20 hours per week and you won't work 175 days in a 52-week period. Seasonal workers are a good example of this because they may work full-time, but only for three months out of the year. If you meet the criteria for waiving coverage, your employer must provide you with a waiver form, which is also available on the Paid Family Leave website. If you waive coverage, you will not make contributions and you will not be eligible for Paid Family Leave benefits. Employers should keep a copy of your waiver on file. If your schedule changes that you no longer qualify for a waiver, your waiver will be automatically revoked within eight weeks of the schedule change. You can also voluntarily revoke a waiver at any time. If your waiver is revoked, your employer will begin taking paid family leave contributions and collect any retroactive amounts due. Now, we'll cover how to request paid family leave when you need to care for a family member with a serious health condition, as well as how disputes and discrimination issues will be handled. If you're an eligible employee, the maximum benefit is available to you once every 52 weeks. When you're ready to request leave to care for a family member with a serious health condition, there are three basic steps. Step one is to notify your employer at least 30 days before the start of your leave if it's foreseeable or as soon as possible if not. Step two is to complete the request forms. And step three is to send all the required forms to the insurance carrier. The insurance carrier must pay or deny your request within 18 calendar days of receiving the completed request or the first day of leave, whichever is later. You must submit your completed request package to your employer's insurance carrier within 30 days after the start of your leave to avoid losing benefits. Now we'll look at each of these steps in a little bit more depth. Step one is to inform your employer, so let your employer know at least 30 days before your leave will start if it's foreseeable. For example, you may be, able to take, you may be planning to take paid family leave if a family member is in treatment for cancer or recovering from a restorative surgery. If you need to take care of your family, family member unexpectedly and 30 days notice isn't possible, for example, in the case of a sudden illness or injury, you have to notify your employer as soon as possible. Step two is to complete the required paid family leave request forms. For family care leave, your request will contain three forms. The first one, the request for paid family leave, gives your insurance company information about you. You'll also need to provide the insurer proof that you have a family member in need of care. To do that, your family member will need to fill out a release of, person, of personal health information so their health care provider can provide the needed proof. Finally, 
you'll get the healthcare provider certification, which is what your family member's healthcare provider will use to confirm that you are taking care of a sick family member. You can get paid family leave request forms from your employer, your employer's insurance carrier, or directly from paidfamilyleave.ny.gov slash form. First, we'll look at the request for paid family leave, which is form PFL1. Every employee who is requesting paid family leave starts with this form. It asks for basic information about you and the leave you want to take, and it has a section for your employer to complete as well. You submit this form to your employer's insurance carrier along with the other completed forms for the type of leave you are taking. Form PFL1 has two parts, and you are responsible for filling out Part A, and your employer is responsible for filling out Part B. The first section of Part A covers your personal information, including your address, your social security number or tax identification number, and your date of birth. You must also state why you are requesting the leave and how the family, how the family member it pertains to is related to you. Next, indicate if you expect your leave to be continuous or intermittent. You may not know all the dates for certain, so you can indicate that they're estimated and update your insurer if a change is needed. Finally, you must provide information about your employment, including your employer's location and phone number, your date of hire, your average gross weekly wage, whether you have more than one employer, if you are taking paid family leave from the other employer, and if you are currently receiving workers' compensation lost wage benefits. You then need to sign and date Part A of the form and give it to your employer, who will then complete Part B of the form. Before giving this form to your employer, make sure that you make a copy of the form PFL1. Your employer has three business days to fill out Part B of Form PFL1 and return it to you. If your employer does not return the form, you can still proceed with your paid family leave request. As mentioned earlier, your family member will need to complete a release of personal health information, Form PFL3, so that their health care provider can provide you the proof that they need your care. You'll be asked to provide your name, your family member's name, and date of birth. This information is required at the top of both pages of the form and is just used to make sure that your insurer can match pages if they get separated. Next, your family member or their authorized representative, which might be you, must complete the rest of the release of personal health information, which gives your family member's health care provider permission to release the necessary information about your family member's serious health condition and need for care. If your family member can't fill out the form on their own and has an authorized representative do it, they must attach a copy of legal documentation, such as the healthcare proxy or power of attorney form, to show that they are allowed to sign on your family member's behalf. Next, you must fill out the healthcare provider certification, Form PFL4. You will need to provide information including your name, address, date of birth, and social security number, as well as your family member's name and date of birth. And this information is provided so the healthcare provider can find the patient's files. You will be asked to provide your name and date of birth as well as your family member's date of birth on the top of the second page of the form as well. You then will need to provide Form PFL4 along with Form PFL3 to your family member's healthcare provider. The healthcare provider will keep Form PFL3 for the record and the release automatically ends after one year or earlier if your family member revokes it. The healthcare provider must then complete the rest of Form PFL4 and return it to your family member or their authorized representative, which might be you. Step three is to send all forms to your employer's insurance carrier. Before submitting your firm form, make sure you make a copy of Form PFL1 and PFL4. You will submit Form PFL1 and Form PFL4 to your employer's paid family leave insurance carrier or directly to your employer if they are self-insured. This address can be found in Part B, Question 13 of Form PFL1. This is the section your employer completed. Form PFL3 only goes to your family member's health care provider and should not be sent to the insurance carrier. If the carrier's address is not on the form, ask your employer or contact the Paid Family Leave Helpline at 844-337-6303 for assistance. The insurance carrier must pay or deny within 18 calendar days of receiving your completed request or the first day of leave, whichever is later. If for some reason your paid family leave request is denied or you have another claim related dispute, such as the amount of your benefits or timeliness of a carrier's decision, you may request to have the denial reviewed by a neutral arbitrator. 
your insurance carrier or employer of self-insured will notify you of the reason for denial and provide you with information about requesting arbitration. Arbitration for paid family leave is handled by NAM, National Arbitration and Mediation. More information on arbitration is available at nyfpfla.namadr.com. As mentioned earlier, your employer may not discriminate against you for requesting or taking paid family leave, and you are guaranteed job protection with the same or comparable job upon return from paid family leave. If your employer does not return you to the same or comparable job, terminates you, reduces your pay and or benefits, or disciplines you in any way as a result of you requesting or taking paid family leave, you can file a discrimination claim with the Workers' Compensation Board. An administrative law judge may order an employer to reinstate an employee, pay any lost wages, pay attorney's fees, and pay up to $500 in penalties. The process and forms are available at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov, or you can call the Paid Family Leave Helpline for assistance at 844-337-6303. There are a few frequently asked questions about paid family leave and other leave policies that might be helpful for you to know. There are several similarities between New York's paid family leave and the Federal Family and Medical Leave Act. Both provide leave for bonding with a child, caring for a family member with a serious health condition, and assisting when a family member is deployed on active military service abroad. You are also guaranteed that you will return to the same or comparable position and your health insurance will continue on the same terms as if you had continued to work. If you contribute to the cost of your health insurance, you must continue to pay your portion of the premium cost while you're on leave. But there are several key differences. PFL is paid, FMLA is not paid. Almost all private employers will carry PFL insurance. FMLA does not include insurance and it has a 50 employee threshold for eligibility. The length of time you must work is also different. In PFL, if you regularly work 20 or more hours per week, you must be in employment for 26 consecutive weeks for that employer. And if you regularly work less than 20 hours per week, you must work 175 days for that employer, which do not need to be consecutive. For FMLA, you must have worked for a full year and 1,250 hours in the last 52 weeks in order to qualify. The biggest distinction may be that under New York's paid family leave, you are taking leave to care for someone else, not for your own health conditions. FMLA does allow you to take leave for your own health conditions. PFL is only taken in full day increments, while FMLA can be taken hourly. And also under PFL, you do not need to use other paid time off first. If I have a sick family member in another country, what do I need to do? It doesn't matter if these family members live outside of New York State or even outside the country. You can take paid family leave to care for your family member living outside New York as long as you are in close proximity to the family member you're caring for during most of the paid family leave. This would include time to travel to the family member receiving care, travel to bring them to New York, secure their medication, or make arrangements for their care. Note, healthcare providers outside of New York, including outside the United States, who are completing the medical certification for paid family leave must have a valid license in the state or country where they practice. If the medical certification is in another language, you do not have a responsibility to translate it before sending it to the carrier. What is needed to demonstrate a domestic partnership? You do not need to have a registered domestic partnership to take paid family leave to care for a domestic partner. The definition in the law is broad, and there are several factors that are looked at when determining whether a domestic partnership exists. These include, but are not limited to, common ownership of property, children in common, signs of intent to marry, shared budgeting, and the length of the personal relationship. For specific questions about what documentation you may need to submit to demonstrate a domestic partnership, you should reach out to your employer's PFL insurance carrier. What if I can't get my medical certification on time? You have 30 days from the beginning of your leave to submit your completed request without losing benefits. If you cannot get documentation to support a leave request within this time frame, the insurance carrier can deny the request. You may reapply once you have received the supporting documentation for submitting your completed paid family leave request. If the insurance carrier denies the request, you can appeal an insurance carrier's denial by requesting a review by neutral arbitration. If you started your leave before the carrier made a determination and you have since been denied, 
You are not considered to be on paid family leave, and it will be up to your employer to determine how to treat that time off. Your employer is, is prohibited from discriminating or retaliating against you for requesting or taking paid family leave. As we mentioned earlier, there are also two additional uses of paid family leave that took effect under emergency legislation enacted in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The legislation allows for a combination of New York paid family leave and disability benefits if you are under an order of mandatory or precautionary quarantine or isolation due to COVID-19. This is the only time that you may receive paid family leave and disability benefits at the same time. It also gives you access to paid family leave if your minor dependent child is under an order of mandatory or precautionary order of quarantine or isolation due to COVID-19. You may apply for a combination of New York State paid family leave and disability benefits to receive your full pay up to a cap for some or all of the quarantine period. You may be eligible to receive 67% of your pay up to a maximum weekly benefit of $840.70. Disability benefits will make up the difference in your salary, up to a maximum weekly benefit of $2,043.92 for a combined total of $2,884.62 per week. There is no waiting period and you will have job protection throughout the quarantine. Depending on the size of your employer, paid sick leave benefits may also be available and those must be used prior to any PFL and disability benefits. Note. The paid family leave uh, for COVID does not apply if you work for a public employer or an employer with 100 or more employees because those employers are require, required to provide up to six, 14 days of paid sick leave. If you request leave for your minor dependent child's quarantine or isolation, you may be eligible to receive 67% of your pay up to a maximum weekly benefit of $840.70. More detailed information about taking paid family leave for your quarantine or your child can be found at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov slash COVID-19. There, you'll also find information about New York State COVID-19 paid sick leave requirements, FAQs, application forms, and more. As you think about how paid family leave may be able to help you and your family, there are resources to assist you. Complete details on paid family leave are available at paidfamilyleave.ny.gov, along with other resources, including paid family leave request forms and fact sheets, weekly deduction and benefit calculators, updates for 2023, and information about paid family leave quarantine leave benefits. If you are thinking about taking paid family leave soon, you can download the forms now and get started filling them out. You can also contact the paid family leave helpline at 844- 337-6303 for assistance. If you are not already subscribed for email updates on paid family leave, you can subscribe by clicking get updates at the bottom of the paidfamilyleave.ny.gov homepage. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss paid family leave for family care and the 2023 updates with you. We will now use the rest of, your time, of our time to take your questions. Please keep in mind that the board is unable to provide legal advice, which includes guidance about what you should do in specific situations. If you have specific questions or concerns about a request for paid family leave, you should contact your disability and paid family leave insurance carrier, as they are the entity that makes the decision to pay or deny benefits. All right, thank you, Courtney. And yes, at this time, we will take your questions. Just a reminder, please keep your phone lines muted. You can enter your questions in the chat box. We do have a number of questions that have already come in. So there's going to be a little brief period of silence as Courtney review those. Um, and I just want to reiterate that we will be providing you with a copy of this slide deck as well as a recorded version. Just make sure you are signed up for email notifications as Courtney instructed. Just go to the Pace Family Leave website, scroll down to the bottom of the page. So again, uh, we're going to take a brief period of silence now as Courtney reviews the questions that have come in and we will be back with you shortly. Thank you. Okay, our first question here is, what is the process if the loved one passes away during paid family leave um, and why is it not covered? So bereavement leave is not currently a qualifying event under the PFL law. Um, so the law does not allow for, for bereavement leave right now. Um, so there would need to be a legislative amendment to cover bereavement leave. So right now, um, if a family member passes away, uh, there is no longer a qualifying event for paid family leave. Uh, the next one here is, can paid family leave be scheduled around co-paid holidays? 
Um, so the answer here is that the interaction of paid holidays or holidays in general and paid family leave is not addressed directly in the paid family leave law. Um, if, for example, if you're taking intermittent PFL and, you know, you have a holiday, a day of paid family leave is defined in the regs as a day that you're, a full day that you're prevented from performing work because you took paid family leave. Um, so generally, if you're taking intermittent leave, you're not going to be able to take paid family leave on a paid holiday day because you're not prevented from performing work because of paid family leave. You wouldn't be working anyway on that day because it's a holiday. Next one here is, are we required to notify employees of the 2023 total contribution change? Um, so there is no requirement in the law or regulations that you notify them about the 2023 uh, rate change for deductions, but we do strongly recommend that you notify your employees. Um, and there is a, a, an example, like a template notice that you can send to your employees right on our website. Okay, next one here is our company is New York based and the employees work flexibly from the New York office slash home. Our commuting employees who live in New York, in New Jersey or Connecticut and work irregularly in New York eligible for New York PFL. Um, so I can't give legal advice, so I'm not gonna be able to give a specific answer for these employees, but to be eligible for paid family leave, an employee must be what's considered localized in New York. So their service has to be what's called localized in New York. And that means they have to work in New York. So someone who works out of state is not going to be eligible for, for paid family leave, um, even if it's like they have temporary or isolated instances of working in New York. If they work out of state, they're not going to be considered localized in New York, and therefore they're not going to be eligible for New York paid family leave. Okay, the next one I see here is if an employee submits a waiver after contributions have already been made, does the employer have to refund contributions back? Uh, to that employee. So the answer is, if the employee's schedule qualifies them for a waiver, you as the employer are required to offer them a waiver before you take deductions. So if they qualify for a waiver and you didn't offer them a waiver and you took deductions and then the employee says, hey, hey, I want to do a waiver, and you took deductions in error without offering it to them, yes, you have to refund those deductions to those, to those employees. Uh, next one here is, what if an employee doesn't notify the employer within 30 days for whatever reason? What is the employer's obligation? Um, so the employee does have to provide at least 30 days notice if the leave is foreseeable. If you as the employer believe that the employee has not provided sufficient notice, uh, you're free to raise that with your disability and PFL insurance carrier. They're the ones who uh, are going to make the determination about eligibility and pay or deny uh, the request. So if you think that the employee didn't provide enough notice, you're free to raise it with the carrier um, and they can look into it. If a so the next one here is, if a layoff occurs at the organization, employees that are out on PFL keep their jobs until the effective layoff date, correct? Uh, so I can't provide legal advice, uh, including guidance on your business practices, so I'm not gonna be able to give you like a yes or no answer, um, but Paid family leave is job-protected leave, and the employee is guaranteed to return to the same or comparable job. If the employee believes that the employer has discriminated against them because they took a request paid family leave, uh, they're free to file a discrimination claim, and it'll be heard before a workers' compensation law judge, but the employer has the opportunity to present their side. So if they can demonstrate that the layoff was not in response or would have occurred, uh, even if the employee hadn't taken paid family leave, they're gonna be able to present all of that to the workers' comp law judge who will make a decision. So can an employee take more than one New York State PFL in a year for two different claims? Um, so yes, it's possible an employee could have multiple qualifying events in a single year. Um, they're still gonna be limited to the 12 weeks in a 52 week period. So regardless of how many qualifying events an employee has in any 52 week period, so if PFL is a rolling calendar, um, they're still limited to the 12 weeks, but they could you know, potentially have five qualifying events and they could take leave for all of them. But regardless of how many, it's still gonna be limited to 12 weeks of PFL in a 52 week period. Okay, the next one here um, says, I've been working for my private employer for over two years and I've had no PFL deductions for my paycheck. Who is the carrier and am I eligible if I haven't seen any deductions for my payroll? Um, so two kind of different things here. First. Your employer is entitled to take deductions um, from their covered employer to pay for their PFL policy, but they don't have to. So it is possible that your employer has decided to just pay 
for the PFL policy on behalf of the employees. So whether or not you've had a deduction um, is not related to your eligibility. Um, so if you think that you're eligible for paid family leave, you're free to apply to the carrier, and it doesn't have anything to do with whether or not you've had a deduction taken from your paycheck. Um, as far as who is the insurance carrier, you can ask your employer um, if you think that you're eligible and that you're, you work for a covered employer. Um, you can also call the PFL helpline, which is on the screen here, the 844-337-6303, um, and you would just ask the, the call center um, to help you with a coverage check if you're not sure who your employer is after, or who the carrier is after talking to your employer. Uh, the next one here is how frequently can an employee request PFL in a year? Um, so that's gonna depend entirely on how many qualifying events and when, but there's no time limit, you know, there's no like, you can only request paid family leave like once every two months or something like that. Um, the an eligible employee can take paid family leave if they're eligible for it, but no matter how many qualifying events, they're always limited to that 12 weeks in a 52 week period. So they're not gonna be able to take any more than 12 weeks in a 52 week period, and it is a rolling 52. So it's not a calendar year. It doesn't reset on January 1st or something like that. It's always a rolling year. So the carrier is always gonna look back 52 weeks, see how much leave the employee has taken. Uh, the next one in here is, are PFL forms required to be given to an employee if the employer has knowledge of a serious health condition of a family member or knowledge of a newborn? or are they furnished only upon request by the employee? Um, so you can look into this more in the regulations and on the, on the PFL website, but generally like, if you know that the employee qualifies for PFL and they're mentioning, they do not have to mention PFL by name, uh, but if you know that they're taking leave and it's something that qualifies for PFL, you do have an obligation to um, provide them information about paid family leave. You also have to have the PFL statement of rights um, posted and you have to have written guidance about paid family leave and uh, there are templates for that on our website as well. Uh, here's a question here about what is considered working majority of the time in New York? Um, so uh, majority is just like the way that I was phrasing it. The law doesn't actually say majority, it says localized. Um, so if you wanna see the test, it's very long. Um, so I can't kind of go into the entire test on here, but it's workers' compensation law section 201 parentheses six, parentheses B and C. So 201 and then subdivision six and then paragraphs B and C. That is where you can find the test for localization and it kind of goes into the factors and goes into, okay, this person works in New York, this person sometimes works outside of New York, um, but most of the time works in New York, um, things like that. So it doesn't have a, an exact definition of what the majority of the time is, um, but it has factors that go into whether or not an employee is localized in New York. Okay, and then the next question here is, I am five months pregnant, my employer is hiring someone else, will I be eligible? Um, so I'm not quite sure what your question is. If your question is you're no longer going to be employed, as in you're, like, you're resigning your job, um, you won't be eligible for paid family leave. If you, if you are no longer in employment, you're not going to be eligible. Um, if you're asking like if you if your employer is hiring someone else while you're on paid family leave and then you want to return to your job, you are guaranteed to return to the same or comparable job upon return from paid family leave. Uh, so the next question here is what are some insurance carriers in New York State? Uh, so there is a list of insurers that are authorized to write paid family leave policies in New York, and you can find that on the Department of Financial Services website. Um, the easiest way, honestly, to get to is Google Department of Financial Services Paid Family Leave, um, and then one of the top results will be their website where they have information about every carrier in New York State. It's a, it's a fairly extensive list. Every character in New York State that is authorized to write disability and paid family leave policies in New York. Uh, the next question here is, how do I verify if my employer has the PFL coverage? Um, so. First, I mean, the first kind of step would be uh, to know if your employer is a covered employer or not. So if they're a private employer and they have one or more employees in New York, they're probably covered and they probably are required to have PFL. Uh, just to note, public employers are not subject to the law and they're not required to have paid family leave, so that's kind of a first step. If you think that your employer is covered, is covered for paid family leave and you're just not sure if they have insurance coverage, you can ask your employer, they should have a poster um, that has the, the information. Uh, their insurance carrier provides them a poster and they're supposed to post it. 
Um, so that's one way you can ask your employer. Another way would be you can call the helpline and you can ask them to help you do a coverage search. Um, and they can do the initial search. If they don't find anything, then there's a more in-depth search that we can do um, to help you figure out who your insurance, your employer's insurance carrier is. Okay, so I see a very specific question here about waivers. Um, if the waiver isn't due to the schedule change, um, but the employee's schedule from date of hire and the employee doesn't return the waiver, um, within the 60 within 60 days, is the employer obligated to refund the contributions or just from when they receive the waiver? So that is not addressed um, in the regulation specifically, and it's very specific, and I can't provide uh, legal advice, um, but you know, generally, you are required to provide the waiver to employees if, based on their schedule, they qualify for a waiver. If you do that and you set a time limit for them to return it and they don't do it, there's nothing preventing you in the law from taking contributions, but the law doesn't specify when and, you know, in that situation what deductions you need to return and what you don't, and I cannot provide legal advice, so I'm not going to be able to tell you kind of a yes or no, um, but, you know, generally, you have to offer them the waiver. It, there's nothing in the law or regulations preventing you from saying you have to return it within X days or we're going to consider that you didn't execute a waiver. Okay, the next question here is, are surrogates eligible for PFL? Um, so there's kind of a few different layers to this, I guess. Um, so PFL for bonding leave is only available for the employee, the employee's child. So if it's not the surrogate's child, they're not going to be able to take PFL for it if it's not their child. Um, but, you know, if, if a surrogate gives birth and one of their family members, you know, if the surrogate has a serious health condition, one of their family members may be eligible to take leave for them. Um, but this is an extremely fact-specific thing, so different factors might affect eligibility. But generally, bonding leave is available only for the employee's newly born, adopted, or foster child. The next question here is, what if I get fired before I apply for paid family leave? Um, so a couple things here. Paid family leave, you have to be employed in order to be eligible. So if you're not employed, you're not eligible for paid family leave. But if you think that your employer has discriminated or retaliated against you because you said, I'm going to take paid family leave, and then they fired you, um, so, you know, related to requesting or taking paid family leave, you can file a discrimination claim, and it'll be heard before a workers' comp judge. And like we talked about before, the workers' comp compensation law judge if it's found in your favor, they can require the employer to reinstate you, and then you may be able to take paid family leave. Uh, so the next question here is, how much the employees pay versus the employer for PFL? So PFL is entirely funded by employees. So covered employers can take deductions from their employees, and those deductions at the rate, um, so next year it'll be the 0.455% each pay period, that those deductions are used by the employer to pay for the PFL insurance policy premium. So the deductions taken from employees will entirely cover the cost of that insurance policy premium, so it's funded by employees. All right, so we have not getting any more questions, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Uh, I want to thank Courtney for taking the time to present this webinar and answer your questions. Thank you to all of you for joining us and asking some great questions. We always appreciate the participation. Uh, before we sign off, I do want to remind you just one more time, you can sign up to receive paid family leave news, including information on future webinars straight to your inbox. Again, just go right to our paid family leave website, scroll down to the bottom of the home page and select Get PFL Updates. We do also distribute information via social media, so make sure you're following the Workers' Compensation Board on Facebook, Twitter. Instagram and YouTube. I had mentioned that we're going to be putting a recorded version of this on our YouTube page. We also have recorded versions of other PFL webinars on that YouTube page, so I uh, highly recommend you check those out too for either a refresher or maybe there is something that we didn't cover in this webinar that you have a question on and might be covered in one of those recordings. So definitely check those out as well. And again, thank you all for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.